Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here on this Monday, February the 13th, 2023. In this video, we are going to keep an eye on that winter storm that is going to be developing in the next 24 to 36 hours over the high plains. This could bring in severe weather and strong winds, followed by a more stronger second storm system that could bring additional heavy snowfall and more severe weather for the deep south. So here's a look at your detailed water vapor imagery from the weathermodels.us website, and we can see where the system actually is on the imagery. This is over the desert southwest, the Four Corners, Phoenix, Arizona, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Lubbock, Texas, this is it right here, and this is going to be ejecting into the high plains, the Midwest, by late tonight into early on for Tuesday. And this is going to bring in severe weather, potentially over portions of St. Louis, Nashville, Tennessee. We're only talking about a marginal risk for severe weather, so not a big deal with this one. But it's going to have a lot of wind, some fire danger potentially, and some bigger impacts on the northern side where this could bring in a little bit of snowfall for the northern tier. And then storm number two is coming in on its heels for Wednesday. And that one looks a whole lot bigger. We could be talking about a big severe weather event day along to go with strong damaging winds and very heavy snowfall for the northern tier of the system. Therefore, when we take a look at our latest National Weather Service alerts, I will tell you what, it is pretty stinking colorful out there right now. We got winter weather advisories, we got winter storm warnings, wind advisories, high wind warnings, fire weather warnings, we got high wind watches, wind advisories, freeze warnings, freeze watches out there right now and that's because this system is going to be coming in from a low latitude and so it's going to bring a lot of cold air and some strong winds with it over portions of the high plains and the midwest including especially across the west where this is going to be pretty extreme as far as strong winds and temperatures go. We're going to see well below average temperatures across the region because of how strong this system actually is. And yes, there are winter storm watches issued for Colorado, for Kansas, and for north or for southeastern Nebraska, including for Minnesota and the Dakotas. Winter storm warnings out there for Montana. So now let's take a look here at the latest weather models as we take a look at this because we're going to time this out. This is a very dynamic system, the first storm system that we are going to be looking at, and then we're going to be dialing in deeper on storm number two. And that one looks a lot more powerful than the first one, and that's one of the reasons why we have all these warnings and advisories out already ahead of that second impulse of moisture. So this is the look at the latest HRRR version 4 model, and the time is listed up here. It is Eastern Time, American New York Time. And so this is 6 p.m. tonight over the Eastern Time Zone. So looking pretty good, but look at this. By the time we go into 6 p.m., um, actually this is 2 in the morning, there we go, for February the 14th, look at this. We got quite a bit of rain and some thunderstorms potentially that could fire up across northern Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. These are likely to be somewhat elevated, and so we are not anticipating to see any severe weather with these storms. But look at this. We got some snowfall over New Mexico, over Montana, over Idaho, over Washington and Oregon. This is storm number two that is coming into view right now and then let's go forward here in time let's go to nine in the morning eastern time there is your first storm system look at this we got a squall line that looks to develop here over eastern and northeastern texas eastern oklahoma also into kansas pretty impressive system and we got a little curly cue on that but take note of that that's going to be moving into the upper Midwest and the Northern Plains and the Great Lakes by the time we go into 8 p.m. on your Tuesday. So this thing is going to be really moving quickly. This is not going to be taking its own sweet time. So a lot of rainfall anticipated across Minnesota, Wisconsin, stretching down to the south into Indiana, Tennessee, and Kentucky. But don't worry, we got storm number two that is lurking <laughs> 
over the four corners here by Tuesday night. And then let's go forward here all the way into the 48 hour time frame. So this is for Wednesday, 1 p.m. And this is where we have the dynamics. Quite a bit of snowfall here, light to moderate indeed. And then of course we got some showers and thunderstorms that we will have to monitor quite closely. As of right now, this is relatively early. Uh, actually, no, wait, this is 1 p.m. Eastern time. That is correct. And this is valid for 18Z. So yes, this is 1 p.m. Eastern time. And so it is going to be interesting to see how this all evolves in future model runs. In fact, when we take a look at the NAM model for the 51 hour time frame for 4 p.m. on Wednesday, there it is. Moderate to heavy snowfall over northern Texas, western Oklahoma into western Kansas. Again, pretty impressive system and this is going to continue to slosh eastward. And then of course, there it is. We got some severe weather to contend with potentially for Wednesday night into Thursday. Now, specifically on this model, this does not look to be very impressive by any means, which is why the SPC has kept a slight risk for severe weather. Over northeastern Texas, over northern Louisiana, over central Arkansas, southeastern Oklahoma, northwestern portion there of Mississippi, western Tennessee, western Kentucky, and southeastern Missouri, and southern portion there of Illinois and Indiana under the slight and marginal risks for severe weather. This is driven just by a 15% chance for severe weather with non-SIG probabilities at this time, with a 5% chance for severe weather surrounding that over Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, Northern Mississippi, Northern Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Southern Indiana, uh, Southern Indiana, Southern Illinois, Southern Missouri, and again, Oklahoma there. There's also a four, day four probabilistic severe weather threat for Thursday. This includes for Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, portion there of Ohio, and Indiana. 15% chance here for severe weather. So we're looking at a couple of days here, folks, of some rough, bumpy weather. But day five looks pretty good otherwise. Also, the reason why the Storm Prediction Center has kept a slight risk for severe weather is because of the dynamics that are going to be involved here. Originally, we thought that this was probably going to be more of a stout, negatively tilted trough as what we thought a couple of days ago in previous videos. Videos, but now this is more stretched thin, more kind of a neutral to positively tilted trough as we can see here. And so you know how that goes, right? We don't get the dynamics that we want for severe weather, but there will be enough for at least a severe weather day for Wednesday and Thursday, if that makes sense. So it's not like, oh, we're not going to see any severe weather at all. We will. It's probably going to just be on the slight to maybe just a slim chance for an enhanced risk for severe weather in later outlooks. All right, but this is a look at your Thursday. And yes, lots of severe weather going on, thunderstorms on the water vapor imagery, intense convection going on across Kentucky and Tennessee on Thursday. This would be 7 in the morning, by the way. And then by 7 p.m. on Thursday, that system kind of gets stretched. And you can see it right here easily on the water vapor imagery. It's not really like the first system where it has more of better dynamics. But of course, there's not good quality moisture return since this thing is going to be moving through very quickly. So if this was moving a lot slower, the first one, we would be looking at more severe weather. But since this thing is just moving too quickly, there's not going to be enough time for moisture return to initialize significant severe weather. So that's kind of the, re the reason why the first one is even more dynamic than the second one, but it's moving a lot faster than the second system. All right, hopefully I didn't confuse you all there. Okay, so now, snowfall totals. How much are you anticipating? Well, just kind of a win-on-win, win-or-lose situation. There's still some um, inconsistencies among the models, but the European model... It, um, illustrates probably two to four inches of snowfall over Kansas right across the uh, Iowa region into uh, southeastern portion there of Nebraska. If you are in Wisconsin, if you are in Michigan, uh, three to six inches of snowfall is anticipated. But look at this, for the four corners, might get almost a foot of snowfall in the 10 and one ratio snowfall accumulation forecast. While the deep south, 
course, you're not going to see any snow any time soon. All right, so now that we talked about the, the snowfall, the severe weather, what about the wind? Yes, the winds are going to be a big deal out of this first system especially. Even the second system can have a lot of wind with it too. Windy systems ahead. We see it already on the National Weather Service alerts forecast where we have a lot going on, right? Well, no surprise, we're seeing that here on the models too. So let's go forward, right? So this is for uh, this afternoon. Winds do pick up out of the southeasterly direction. By the way, these are wind gust forecasts, okay? So really intense gusts between uh, 30 to 40 miles an hour across the high plains. But look at this. By the time we go into tomorrow, look at these winds. Really, really strong. Anywhere between 50 to 60 mile an hour wind gusts over central and northern Texas, as well as some of the higher elevations here, like near Santa Fe, New Mexico. Some very intense downsloping winds, possibly gusting over 60 miles an hour. But look at this. For the Midwest and for the Great Lakes, gusts between 30 and 40 miles an hour as that system approaches. And then look at this. By 10 p.m., on Tuesday, look at this, really intense winds for Indiana, gusts between 45 to 50 miles an hour, approaching maybe 50 to 55 over Michigan, and then that moves out of the region. So through the next, uh, say, 60 hours, there's going to be some breezy to strong winds anticipated for the high plains, for the desert southwest, and for the Great Lakes region. So now that we talked about that, if you're enjoying the video so far, hit the subscribe button and share this with your family and friends on social media. So we did talk about the severe weather once again on our latest SPC Pivotal Weather Forecast, but now let's take a look at our WPC forecast as we are keeping an eye on the chances for significant uh, or for a marginal risk for moderate to heavy rainfall. And there's only a 5 to 10% chance of that happening over portions of the Deep South, and especially over the Ozarks and the Kentucky region, including for the Tennessee Valley, under a marginal risk for heavy rainfall on day three. That would be for uh, Wednesday into Thursday. So Wednesday morning into Thursday morning would be the time frame. But not only that, it's going to be really warm for the next couple of weeks. That's just how it's been lately. It hasn't really budged very much. So if you are across the Midwest and the Eastern Seaboard, okay, it's going to be warmer than normal. The chances of that occurring are higher. So areas like the Eastern Seaboard here, you have a 80 to 90% chance you could see above average temperatures versus areas like, say, um, portions of Texas, Oklahoma, and, say, uh, um, Kansas City, you're going to see a 33 to 50% chance of above average temperatures. But what about the West? Well, what's this blue color, you may ask? Well, that's below average temperature chances. Uh, anywhere between 50 to 60% chance of that occurring. There's a little area here, even seeing a 70% chance of below average temperatures. All right, so that's what that is. 8 to 14 day forecast, even going cooler. Look at this, a 60 to 70% chance for below average temperatures over the Pacific Northwest and the West Coast, including for California including for the northern plains but look at this gonna stay warm uh, warmer than normal those chances are higher the further southeast you go into georgia the carolinas and florida so winter is probably done i would say probably for the southeast for as of right now um there are some models that do indicate below average temperatures but only briefly it's just not gonna stick around for very long so rainfall chances likely above normal across much of the U.S., including for Florida, where you have a uh, leaning below chance there. 8 to 14 day forecast does call for likely above average for the Pacific Northwest and the Great Lakes region, including for portions there of the Ozarks. Well, now that we talked about our weather alerts and weather concerns, well, you might want to get alerted when I have my latest YouTube videos out by hitting the red subscribe button, hitting the like button, and sharing this with their family and friends on social media. It really, really means a lot, folks. I am still looking into doing a live stream on Thursday or Wednesday and maybe even Thursday. You all have been wanting me to live stream? Well, if you want to see me live, subscribe to the channel right now to get the latest weather information near you. 
because I'm going to be uploading on an every single day basis, right around 3 to 4 p.m. each and every day. So make sure you have all those notifications turned on. Thanks for watching. Be back with you more tomorrow with another detailed upload.